dream or flight. Hello everyone, Doug Dunbar, AKA the Whiskey Wizard here on behalf of the Whiskey Roundtable. Look, I know I'm preaching to the choir as you're all here watching us now, but we need your help in growing our audience and in making this the best show of its kind. Our vision for the show is that it be live and interactive where our listeners are part of the show, not just passive viewers. And we wanna entertain and educate, but mostly provide a good venue for hanging out with fellow whiskey lovers and learners. We've made a lot of changes this year, and we realize it's going to be a process of continual improvement, but we feel like our foundation is solid. Please, if you have friends or family who are fans of whiskey, or who may have even the slightest interest in learning more, send them our show link and encourage them to watch. Better yet, invite them over to share a dram and watch with you. Check out our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If we grow our subscribers enough, we can add more new and exciting aspects to the show and realize our vision of having the best live whiskey show available anywhere. And we want you all to be a part of that. Again, on behalf of the whole Whiskey Roundtable crew, let us say thanks for your support and thanks for tuning in every week. We love you all. So long, cheers, and slanja. Welcome to the Whiskey Roundtable. We are your hosts. Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doug Dunbar. Nice job on the commercial there, Dougie Doug. Yeah, yeah well, holy yeah. cow. You're a regular old celebrity. Trying new things. Huh? Trying new things. Got to do a little promotion. I see that. All your traveling skills. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> I'm glad you start talking because I almost broke out into that Hangover song. Like you know, they they were sitting in the hotel room and they were on the yeah. piano right. and they said something about little cat baby dreams or something like that. Never mind. My whole life is nothing but movies and stupid quotes like that. So that's we're anyway. getting a lot Pretty of. Soon the the the, the whiskey wizard's probably going to have one of those uh, what is uh, Indian rugs that flies. What do they call those? Remember that? Remember Magic that? carpet? Magic carpet. Carpet, yeah, okay. yeah, carpet yeah. come. Yeah. Car carpet, come. Yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. That would know, be pretty have cool. A flying carpet. Yeah. yeah. You get home, you get here home back yeah. quicker, a lot quicker for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, we've all been watching a lot of TV, movies. What else do we got to do? Dead to Me is back on season yeah. two on, oh. on Netflix. I've been watching that. Well, I could write oh. a story on that's for sure. <laughs> I get a lot of dead to me people that I don't talk to anymore. Have any of you guys watched that movie Contagion? No, we're living it, aren't we? One of yeah, one of my <laughs> friends said you got to see this movie Contagion. It's I'm like, is that like a virus movie? Oh yeah, it's like a it's this pandemic. I'm thinking, no, I mean we're kind of aren't we in the middle of that? So it'd be like Jews watching Schindler's List during the Holocaust, right? right? So. Wow, that's that's really morbid. That's, not, that's, pretty, that's pretty deep, that's Doug. Gee, of. thanks, Doug. <laughs> on an upbeat note. It is Memorial Weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Here comes bomb number I don't know. three. <laughs> that's the only thing I could think of. Oh, boy. Nice. Happy uh, Memorial Day uh, weekend, yes. everybody. We were originally going to be off tonight, right? But, we were originally going to be off uh, tonight. But since I, my original travel plans, I was supposed to be in the... Uh, uh, cruising in the Mediterranean this week. Now you're cruising so, in Bainbridge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's so, what I'm talking see, about. I, and you'd much rather be with us than I'd much rather be Bainbridge. here on the whiskey ride. I mean, who wants, to, who wants to be with Sean on the cruise? I mean, really? Yeah. Yeah, here we go. So we're, just kidding, girlfriend. I got but, you, Sean. Gotcha. So anyway, I don't... It's... Yeah, man, it sucks, man. All these vacation plans and everything is yeah. just... Well, we were supposed to be at a wedding this weekend. Yes, we were. Yes, we were. That's right. That's we were supposed to be off this weekend. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know when we're going to be back to normal, but 
I don't know, but when we do go back to normal, it's still going to be raining here in Cleveland. Because could it stop? Yeah. Really? I don't know. We live in a rainforest, I think, or something. It's pretty bad. I was going to say we needed... We get like in- one, two nice days a week if we're lucky, right? I was going to say we need an in-ground pool, but I think, you know, by default, we kind of have one now with yeah. all the rain, but it's just crazy. Mm. Absolutely nuts. we got nuts. an in-ground pool out there. we got a pool in a pond. Yeah. The pond's good for you. Here I go <laughs> with my movie clips again. Well, I read that scientists finally figured out there's really two main uh, factors in, as far as the spread of the coronavirus. Okay. Well, number one is how dense the population is, and number two is how dense the population. <laughs> oh, oh, and for God. the person who just commented, hey, you just said the same thing twice, what's the second one? You're number two. <laughs> that reminds me of a joke I saw. This is really stupid, okay? But I think it's funny. It's kind of like stu- your polar stu- bear. Stupider than my Confucius yeah. say, or what? No, no. So I, I saw a joke today. Um, on Facebook, so this bear walks into the bar and he's like, "I'll take a jack and coke." The bartender says, "Why such the big paws?" I don't know. I was born with them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is like the polar bear. Oh, <laughs> God, I thought polar it was. I don't love the polar Like bear I said joke. last week, I don't know if anybody knows what they're doing though when it comes to you know the rules and yeah. controls. I, th- I think like they're probably going to look back at this time in the future and kind of the way we kind of look. As far as all the things we did and the medical advice, kind of like we look at now, like how they re- used to do bloodletting as a way to <laughs> cure people of diseases. I think that's how they're going to view the current medical advice we're getting. But well, I think any of my friends that know me know that I have one simple philosophy. I have no rules. I do what I want. <laughs> all right, Cartman. <laughs> No yeah, rules. unfortunately, people. Business, you can't do that. Public like, businesses don't have the option mm-hmm. with all the craziness going on. So, anyway, I just hope it, it gets back to normal sooner than we thought it might. But. Well, just drink lots of alcohol and keep yourself mm-hmm. disinfected. That's, that's what I that's, say. That's yeah, for us. doing that. Doing that. Too funny. That's right. We're doing our part. Yeah. <laughs> what are you smoking, Big G? Um, I don't even know what I'm smoking. It looks like smoking? you've been smoking it for a little while. <laughs> it's a little. What are you smoking? I forgot what I was smoking. A cigar. Smoking. Well, it's a new cigar I just got. I don't even remember what it was. It was Is it a good? Kirkus special. It was a. Uh, was it Carrington? No, that's what I had. Oh yeah, the, okay. I don't remember what I had. Sorry. I really don't. You know, I just it, remember it was Ecuadorian and it had... Just say uh, Perdomo 23. No, that's what you're smoking. Oh, Sidecar's okay. in the audience today. He's not doing the show. He hasn't done the show in a while. Yeah, no, he hasn't. Like What's in it? Well, that feeling's mutual. He finally got his hair cut, though. He you did. You should have seen it before. He looks like an old woman now. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got the boobs, too. Yeah, you sure do. He's got the moobs. He's got the man the, boobs. And the camel toe. I was in, Flor- <laughs> I was in Florida in free beaches. I bet you were. Oh, yeah. So guys, when did you did get back? Did they try rolling you back in? <laughs> they got back <laughs> back Sunday. Yeah, they came back. Yeah, it was good. Just Smoking in time, the governor, bars. you know, did his, uh, we don't have to do the 14-day um, I'm in quarantine. quarantine. I've anymore. been over at G's the whole time. Yeah. Down in the so, basement drinking. All right. You have? I think this is the first time we had. Here. Yeah? Oh, okay. First time we had what? I don't remember. I've been living here. Down in the basement. Oh dear! So wonder the place is so cluttered. The dogs bring me, the dogs bring me down food. Do they? Yeah. I, yeah, I bet they do. You know, what I do it sometimes when I'm with uh, Jimbo. I give him a, a treat, and he's all giddy, you know, and he like rips it out of your hand, tries to swallow your whole hand, and then I take another treat and I go, here, go give this to George. <laughs> It's all gone. It's like, really, Jimbo? Meanwhile, she's sitting on the couch going, what? Yeah, well, where's mine? Really? Jimbo ate my treat. What the hell is that? Too funny. So what else is going on, kids? What's everybody doing for the weekend? Uh, just getting some yard work done, having having a social distancing party tomorrow. Me too. Tomorrow and Sunday and probably Monday too. Making a nice fire in the fire pit. And enjoying yeah. some cigars and some... 
I don't. Maybe we'll even have some whiskey. I don't know. Get the uh, hell out of here. No Do you way. drink whiskey? Yeah. Something I was different. thinking about it. Mm. Did you see his shirt? I did. I did. <laughs> I drink whiskey and I know things. <laughs> Too funny. So what are we doing for the show today, kids? Well, we're doing what? some old Forrester signature 100 proof, right? And uh, we've kind of been on a little bit of a, a old Forrester kick. Yeah, here, we I have. Guess. Yep. Just kind of the way it turned out. Um, so, but, uh, and I think we have another bourbon next week, but then we're going to be on to maybe a couple weeks in a row of some single malt. So we'll be looking forward to that as yeah, well. Yeah, we, we have a guest next week. We, we do. do. Jennifer, Jennifer Boggs is going to be with us. Uh, Right here in the studio, so uh, looking forward to that. And, uh, she bringing some of that. She seems to know a lot about bourbon, and it'll be fun to have her on. I think you know maybe we'll even have a little specially prepared couple of surprises for next week. So. Is she the one that has the uh, sword fight chicken cock? She has the chicken yes. cock. Mm. Well, that was the, the one cock. she was drinking. The other, I don't know what she'll bring something to uh, share but we're going to be sure i guess we're doing some some kind of whiskey next week uh, four roses i don't know we don't, don't we do a whole pre-month before <laughs> <laughs> we do we, okay. we, we do right. well, we it, it's to, on the calendar we probably need to get back to that would be yeah nice. we do we do right. um but you brought up the chicken cock so jennifer's had a really rough week uh she said awful week i'm sorry she's already finished her first pour of rabbit hill cave hill rabbit hole Rebel. Cave Hill, and now she's working on Little Book. Well, God bless you, Jennifer, yeah. because uh, apparently you're into farm animals. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll, my. we'll talk about that next week. Yeah, find out what's, what's next going week. On. Sheep whiskey. <laughs> sheep, sheep dip. Well, that's a that's a Scotch. Book. Yeah, working our way up to the cows. Huh? <laughs> nice. Oh my goodness. Good times. <laughs> Uh, All right, so uh, I just wrote that, by the way. Go ahead. Derek <laughs> says, "Yo, Randy." I taught it. Oh yeah. I taught that. He <laughs> taught it. Sorry, he's got uh, something long and black in his mouth right now. He can't talk. <laughs> it's delicious. Ah, it's delicious. So, if anybody has anything they're drinking, they want to share with us. Uh, anybody else, uh, let us know. Or any other comments you have. Chris Snyder is questions. doing Epperfeldy 12-year-old. Ah, that's Epperf what we just yeah, talked Epperfeldy, about that yes. this week, Ruffy. I'm doing Ryan Guy's since he made Uncle. Uncle. Oh, you're drinking beer. And old <coughs> bourbon. And some what kind of bourbon? Old Forster I haven't had it. I'm try it. He's got the, try yet. He's got, yeah, so we're, we have the uh, Old Forster uh, signature, uh, Hunter Proof, and then we I think we're going to try the other... Other one as might, well. might compare it with yeah. the ball and bond. We originally thought maybe this hundred was a ball and bond, but of course it's not. So, just means it probably wasn't aged in a uh, federally bonded warehouse, and it may not meet all the other requirements. But that's why it'll be interesting to compare it with their 1897 uh, ball and bond. Awesome. Awesome. That's what I'm talking about. All right. What, so. Uh, so is Karen going to tell us about this one? Yeah, I can switch over to that. Now, I haven't, uh, since we just did Old Forester a couple yeah. weeks ago, I, d I didn't really go into too much. But, you know, I'm just curious. Did anyone watch the turtle race? We had talked about yeah, we, the uh, turtle race being on instead of the Kentucky Derby. So I did watch it. And? It was classic. I can't give it away because, okay. you know, if you want to place your bets... You can still do that, but oh, okay. Um, so you can go there and, to the site and and play it. To yes, can you play it. You can go to. Let me see. What did I said the Old Forester YouTube channel, um, and you can catch that. The slowest eight minutes in sports. It's called. It, it was great. I mean, they did the whole thing they on the day the, of that would have been the Kentucky Derby day. Yeah. I guess they're doing the Derby in September for whatever. So, oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. So maybe we'll uh, resurrect that. Right, Again, if cool. it's still out there before that show, too. We'll get some special Woodfords for that. And yeah. We'll do some stuff. That'd be awesome. We can do some knit and juleps. We can have yeah. Cameron teach us how to do There you go. Juleps. Oh, yeah. Those drinks were so good last week. Let, his, let his girlfriend drinks. make them. She makes better drinks. <laughs> I think all the mint juleps at the Derby are actually the, old, the ones they pre-make are the old Forester mint juleps. Gotcha. But I guess you can get one in a silver 
and gold glass. You can, you can spend have, about a thousand dollars on it. Oh, sure. Too late. I have the silver glasses, by the way. You do. I do. <laughs> Somehow, I'm not totally surprised by that. <laughs> They're hanging right over there in that bag over there All right. on the door. We'll have, to, we'll have to see, look at that after the show. Huh? Yeah, I got two silver ones from my nephew. Oh, the, oh, okay, yeah, those. I was thinking the other ones that you got. Yeah, yeah those are Irish right whiskey glasses. I was uh, going to give thinking Doug of, a couple of those. Jameson ones, never mind. I got a bunch of the Irish whiskey ones. I'll give you one. I'll give you two of those glasses, Doug, before you leave. All right. Sounds All good. right, so just real quickly, Old Forester, it is the only bourbon that's continually sold by the same company before, during, and after Prohibition. And uh, Old Forester Distillery is the only downtown distillery which houses an active cooperage. So they char the barrels in the same facility where the spirits are aged. Mm -hmm. And I saw that, and I have some footage of that, so in a future Whiskey Wizard, we'll be covering some of that. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Uh, the facility will produce and fill up to 26 barrels a day. Wow. I know. Thirsty. And then the current master distiller is Chris Morris. So I am going to just move on to what we're drinking today again. I don't want to yeah. go into too much of what we had talked so, about So, yeah, before. just check out the uh, last show, I guess. Was there the show before? Two shows ago. Two, two shows ago. Two and shows if you ago. want to learn more about Brown Foreman and the Old Forester Distilling Company. So this is the Old Forester 100 proof. Or it's called the Signature. It's the one with the, the black label on the table there. It's got a mash bill that consists of 72% corn, 18% rye, 10% malted barley. There's no age statement no. Um, on this it's one. No, it's an AS. So, uh, and, and it's, it's sale, it sales, it sells for around $30 a right. bottle. Mm -hmm. Right. So not a bargain bourbon, but we don't, we're not really into bargain anyways. No, we're no. not. I agree with that. Uh, the, uh, signature gets its name in honor of the founder, George Garvin Brown, who was the founder back in 1870. And it features his signature on the bottle. I'm kind of excited to try this one because at this year's San Francisco World Spirits competition, it won a double gold medal. Ah. So I'm not a uh, old Forester, you know, it's not something I would pick, but um, one of your I'm, I'm kind of excited brands. to try this one just, you know, because it is a recent winner there. So I'm ready to dig it's in whenever been, you guys it's are. It's been growing on me, I have to say. Mm -hmm. And after visiting there, we had a really fun time. So, one for you. All right. Two for you. Two for you. One for me. All right. All right. Got so a, I do have the the nose and the and pretty the pretty rich color there. to it. I would say. It sure is. Definite old forester always has to me. It's got that hearty yeah. color to it. Did you go in and smell yet? Mm -mm. Cleaning your palate? Yeah. Smells uh, sweet. Yeah, I get like Brown cherry sugar. cherry and caramel. Yeah. yeah, I would say dark fruit for sure. Yeah, it's got a lot of them. I, I'm having oak? a hard time picking. I get the oak, but I'm having a hard time picking anything else yeah. out. Yeah, you get your standard caramel, your vanilla, oak. You want me to read some of the tasting yeah. notes? I'm yeah, a little, little maybe. Oh, the nose. nose. nose yeah, notes. read the nose. Let's, let's so hear what the nose says. I, I, I picked a I couple. I got the apple. Maybe a little bit of pear or apple. <coughs> I picked a couple different noses. It's interesting to me when you go on different websites and you you look at the different Taste. opinions that sure, people have exactly. on the nose exactly. and the palate, how it yeah, differs. So sure. I thought... Everybody's palate's different. I'm Everybody's try nose to get is a, different. A yeah. little bit of a range here. So one of the uh, nose notes that I got here mentions a sweet caramel and cherry. Yeah. So you guys both said the, the, the dark cherry, fruit. Yeah. And then there was another t uh, nose note that said it's a strong, sweet coffee laced with chocolate. Okay. Creamy butterscotch and a hint of licorice. Now I'm not picking up any of that. 
Me neither. Coffee, chocolate, licorice, none of that. I think there's something wrong with my smeller today, because... I'm picking up the glass. Ralph else smells glass in his? Mm-hmm. I'm terrible with I could, uh, I could almost scent a, maybe a, a tinge of butterscotch, but I'm not picking up the others. Yeah, I, guess kind of, I would more of a buttery caramel yeah, kind of. Yeah, caramel. I agree more of the more of the caramel for sure than the than any butterscotch. It's a, it's a very balanced nose. So, to me, what do you uh, what do you get on the palate? You want to try Let's first go. before oh, I try. Tell you? All right, we'll try. Let's do it. Okay. Wow. That's nice. Mm -hmm. For 100 proof, you don't. Eat, it does not drink like 100 proof. I'd say drinks like an 86 proof. That's real nice. Yeah. That's I'd a, say I definitely get the oak, which I, I'm a fan of, as you know. I'd say I get a little pecan, maybe... I don't know, a touch of maybe maple. What's the bitterness I'm tasting in there? I'm getting it too, the bitterness. I'm just trying to think of what it might be. I'm going to say I taste a little lemon in it. Mm, no, it's it's got that bitter lemon taste that it, I mean, feel that it makes like, it. Maybe like yeah, citrus zest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, definitely not any citrus juice, but maybe a little bit of peel. Those legs are ridiculous. Holy even crap. Right. Yeah. I'm behind over here, kids. Sorry. So what I picked up uh, from the palette, the one that I, I pulled off said it's a bold oak oh, yeah. with punchy pecans and caramelized maple syrup. Dougie, Dougie you the whiskey wizard over there. I. I think it, it's, um, I don't get a long finish with this. I don't either. Um, a little pepper, pepperiness and clove on the finish, but it's not a very, I wouldn't call it a long finish. It seems yeah, to, it definitely is not a long finish. No. It's a, kind of a quick palate. I'm not, not, not at all unpleasant. I mean, I very much like it. It's very, like the nose, I think it's pretty balanced, and there's nothing that makes me go, oh. I think it's very good, very balanced. So. Good stuff. Just doesn't, you know, I'm not getting a lot of oomph, a lot of length on the, on the taste. And another another tasting note said it's got uh, ripe apple and other sweet fruit, baking spice like clove or nutmeg, which might be where I'm getting yeah. the bitterness. That could be a little that clove. Could be. That could be sure. little clove, like I said, on that the could finish. Be. Not then, very long lasting, but it, yeah, I get that. And then the toasted oak, the finish. Definitely a good oak presence throughout the whole taste. Right. The finish is a pepper, clove, and seasoned oak. And also it says uh, hints of oak and apple that linger. I don't get any of that apple. And like I said, I'm not getting a lot of linger either. But, mm. but you know. Um, did you say licorice before? That was I one of the did things. I did on the nose. I get, you know what, this last, just every once in a while when I, when I do tastings, um, and I just... Take a little splash of it, and uh, just you know, just regular breathing, so to way, so to say. Sometimes I pick up something that I didn't pick up before, and that time I, I actually, uh, I'm going to say black licorice. Yeah, and kind of, that's kind yeah. of. That's what I. That's what I got. It, for, it, it's it's quick. I mean, it's less than a second. It's there, but it's just enough to to make your brain go licorice, you know. But um, I, I get on the last nod. I've drank that probably four times. And then it's that last little breath, you get that vapor, if you yeah. will, and I, I get I get black liquor shot of it. That's part of the joy of whiskey. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. I yeah. think it's great. All right. With uh, one to five, kids. One to five. What do you think? So where are we going? You, you want me to start this week? Yeah, you go ahead. You guys are going to, um, you're not going to be happy with me. Okay. Um, I'm giving it a three. Um, I, I don't feel like there's a lot there with this one. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I like it. There's just, it, it's not a lot there. And um, it's hard for me to pick out anything that makes it unique. Okay. 
So I'm just going to go with the solid three. All right. I, uh, I think it's well balanced. I think it's, uh, it's something I could find myself drinking multiple times. Um, I think it's good. I think it doesn't drink like a hundred proof. I think it drinks more like an eighty-six or maybe even a ninety proof. But I tell you, the heat is low, mm -hmm. and uh, right. you know I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a four-two. Wow. Well, I would uh, I would say uh, like you said. I think it's very it's a very straightforward, well balanced on the nose on the palate um, I think it could use a little more length and complexity overall so I'm gonna I think this would be a for me compared to like the single barrel we had last time um, and some of the other ones we've had I, I don't I wouldn't put it quite up there with those I'm gonna give it I still like it a good mm -hmm. bit I would use I think this is a great uh, a, a great bourbon for a cocktail for a Manhattan's, you know, um, I would, I think it's perfect for that. The hunter proof, it's not going to get, you know, it's not going to get too, too lost in the cocktail. So I think it'd be great for that. I'm going to give it a 3.9. Okay. For, for the, uh, for the score for me. So, okay. Nope. And I'm now getting smart and making a note of these. So we oh, I, yeah, I have been too. So <laughs> the only one I don't have is your score from the first numerical score we did. I, I have to go it. watch the show. Yeah, well, I got it. I you wrote have it? it? Okay. Yeah, I wrote Let it Let me down. know and I'll put it in my notes. I've okay. been keeping score. And, and I think one of the things that <clears throat> we had <clears throat> promised to do, which I don't think we have done yet, is to kind of give you guys an idea of where we are with our ratings. It's on a one to five scale. Mm -hmm. And right. just so that you know, like what we, what we're talking about when we give it these, these ratings, right. you know, some of it is, you know, I wouldn't ever drink it again. <laughs> when so, then, right. Or um, I would use it. I'd use I mean, it as I'm, a mix. You know, my in my personal my personal taste. Um, you know, I, I like. I think it's very. Uh, it's, I think it's a good drink. I think it doesn't drink like a hundred proof. I think it's. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very smooth and it's en very enjoyable. I don't like a lot of heat. I'm not a heat guy. I mean, I can yeah. drink. You know, I've George T. Stagg Juniors and Ooh. Knob Creeks and uh, Ezra. Uh, Old Ezra 7, 117 proof. You know, those those pack a heat punch, man. Yeah, I would say this is a good whiskey. Um, if you have somebody over that's not necessarily sure how much they like bourbon and you want to let them try some, maybe over a couple ice cubes, I think right. this would be a great whiskey for that. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, if it's, it, you know, I like everything about it. And, uh, you know. Yeah, I there's nothing I dislike about it. It's right. just, you know what I'm saying. It doesn't have the wow factor that some of the other, like the single barrel. You gonna pour a little water in mine? Let's see, just a drip or two. Yeah, and and as you said that, Doug, you just made me think. I wonder. Oops. Oh, that's right. That's probably too much. I wonder what it tastes like with a little dab of water in there. So, I wonder if it opens it up at all. So I'm gonna give that a. You wanna try? Cause mine's a little bit cleaner. Yours is gonna be watered down. Cause I, too much in there. Yeah, I would keep it. I don't know if I would go with water, cause it. Like Greg said, I think it's okay. Really well, when I just when I just had yours with the water in it, um, I got a lot of heat right out of the right out of the gate. It went away quick, but it was a lot more than I than when I just had it by itself without really? any water. I'm gonna try mine just to see what it is. Okay. Yeah, I put a little too much in there. I apologize. Now. Um, as I was looking forward to, it's it's good with the, it's good with a little water. It it's very similar to what I tried the very first time. Um, now I'm getting some heat, but um, me myself personally, I drink it right out of the bottle and do nothing to it. But I'm an yeah, old, I'm an old Forster fan. I agree so, with that. You know. Me too. Me too. Um, so uh, we what we wanted to do. Because that's 100 proof. What's also 100 proof is the 1897 bottle and bond. And so I thought we, you know, we thought we should do a little comparison, sure. maybe. All right. Okay. Shall we, we? Do that. You show off those legs and your shorts there, dear. <laughs> no one saw that. You're off <laughs> camera now. Let me get you my pants back up. Yes. You forgot to shave. I see. I did. 
Like I said to Doug. Here you go, sir. It's for you. For me. I see. Oof. I got I got down this one. You want to down that for me? Yeah, I will. Sure. Those Clorox wipes? Yep, they sure are. Nice. I just I can't shoot right now. All right, so this one is just the 1870 bottle and bond? 1897, yeah. 1897, okay. And hand me a glass and I'll oh, thank you. get that refilled for you. Dougie's? That's good. I just, yeah, perfect. Perfect. That's me. Yeah, that water brings out the heat in that. My, my tongue is... It opened it up a yeah. lot more. Oof. Definitely opened it up a lot more. And I, 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 I am not the like I said. I can drink heat. Don't get me wrong. I'm gonna take these up to the camera. Yeah. Turn that uh, black one more head on. The black. This. There you go. There you go. The signature. That was the first one that we tried, and then now we're going in on this one. All right. So let's see. So 1897. I know we talked last week or last time about this, but 1897. This kind of goes, obviously, with, with your bottled and bond act of right. 1897. So there's a reason for that. Look at yes. us. We actually <laughs> plan things out sometimes. There we go. That'll be a good segue when we're done with it. No, I did not get any notes All on right. this one. So, so we're uh, just going to fly? We're going to fly by the seat of Greg's pants. pants. Okay, um, the nose, I get a lot more off yeah, of this one. I'm getting... I get caramel. Ooh, I do too. I get caramel, I get vanilla, I get oak. Oh, wow, this is totally different. Yeah. I would I would say maybe I smell the pecan in this one and not the other one, but I do. I almost spilled. I almost spilled. Yeah, I know, right? Don't don't be spilling nothing on that laptop. Uh, sidecar, did you want to try this one? I get a little. Oh, I get. I get oh, you want to try? It? I'm sorry, oh, sidecar. No, okay. I, I oh, get a little. Uh, I get a little brown. Your brown sugar, yeah. oak. I get definitely I get some baking spice, mm -hmm. and I get a little green apple on this. One. Maybe. Uh, ooh. I. I oh, what is that? Like marzipan, almost. I get green of, apple out of it. Yeah. I get a lot of baking spice out of this one. I get, I get a sweet bit, out of it. Like Sweeties. a doughy, like a cookie dough. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, like a cookie dough uh, cinnamon. Aroma. Maybe yeah, cinnamon. Yeah, and there are some baking spice like clove and cinnamon. This There's a lot going on here. There's yeah. a lot more going on in this bottle yes. for sure. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's see what uh, let's see what the palate has to offer. I'd say color is pretty comparable. Wow. My first uh, my first flavor I, I taste tasted was uh, a little bit of a little bit of grass, a little bit of earth, and I got some like uh, candy apple, and I got pepper, some black pepper. Yeah, I definitely get. But I got the sweet, like the candy apple uh, that kind of hit me right off. The I get. I don't know. Uh, if you ever remember this, but when your parents had the different, uh, on the holidays, they had the bowl with the nutcrackers and you had the pecan and the walnut yeah. and all that. Yeah. You ever sometimes when you're, as a kid, you were trying to use your mouth to get the nut out of it. And I get that, I get that pecan nut shell yeah. flavor. Yes. That's what I get. I agree. That's exactly what I get out of it. That was the most prominent thing out of that glass, which was actually enjoyable to me. The, you know. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. You remember when you had the little nut pick mm -hmm. and all that We're stuff? We're not all friends. that old, man. We're not all that old, but uh, old you, enough to you're remember. You're all older than I am. <laughs> so there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, complexity with this. Yeah, this brings and out a little lot bit, more. Every sip has a little, a little more depth. I do. I get that I'm pronounced. Getting, uh, I get that nutshell pronounced, man. I can get a little of the really? pecan, candy apple, like I said. Some yeah. I get apple. Sugar, I get some yeah. baking spice, sugar, cloves, spice cinnamon, cinnamon. and definitely the oak. How come you always have to have nuts in your mouth? I get them close in my mouth. But anyway. Um, 
I'm sorry, I'm such a child. This one to me, um, I would pick this one over the signature. Definitely absolutely, would pick this over the signature. I would. That's good. Are we going to score the? Do you want to go ahead and score this one? We can. So the 1897 Ball and Bond. I'll go first with this one. I'm, I'm giving this one a 4.3. I really like this. I think it's outstanding. You're going to be mad at me, but I'm going with the 3.9. Okay. Ooh. Interesting. It's like you two almost just flip-flopped. I know. So, Doug, you gave the other one a 3.9, and yeah. Greg, you gave the other one a 4.9. So you actually yeah. like the signature I, better. There was definitely, there was de I think this signature is a, in my personal opinion, I think it's better blended. Really? Okay. Honestly, God. Really? But that's the, that's the fun of this. It was it was very consistent with me, and I'm about consistency. So that's why uh, the the signature I think is a is a better drinking. The 1897 is is a great drink as well. I think you know they're comparable in drinking, but I think the uh, um, the signature was smoother, and I think it was uh, you know better better Sorry. blended, better put together. Sorry, kids. No, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a 3.5 on okay. this one. Um, I okay. didn't get a whole lot out of the signature. It just even on the nose, I couldn't pick anything up on it. Yeah, I think if I drink it more slowly on the signature, which I'm gonna which I will do this weekend, um, I think I'll get a lot more out of it. You know, sometimes we you know we we drink and we're trying to figure things out. Sometimes when you're just kicking back and relaxed, so to say. Not that we're not relaxed, but you know what I'm saying. When we're not thinking about this or thinking about that, I think I will be able to pull a lot more out of that signature. Mm -hmm. The, uh, I think the, the, the palette, so to say, in the 1897, offered a little bit more of a bouquet, but um, I just think that the. Uh, I'm sorry, on the 1897. On the signature, I think it was better blended. I think it's a good drink, and it was very consistent. Well, to me, the the, the Ball and Bond uh, 1897 has a much more um, long finish. Um, I got the clove and the spice long at the end, uh, which just for me, I like that. I like that. Um, Width in the palette versus, I thought the signature is a little short when it came to that. So I agree. Just uh, I, so what, I'm, what? Any comments? Is that? Oh, Snyder, Chris oh. Snyder. He's he's cracking me up over what? here. Oh, let's. So he says his favorite tasting notes. So you know, to compare things. Okay. To yeah. one pencil shavings. Yes, I. Yeah, I, I've had that one. Uh, two, a wet terry cloth. <laughs> Hey. What the hell is this guy putting in his mouth? <laughs> Don't ask. Uh, three burnt. I'm here. <laughs> three burnt toast. Right. Four. I I I don't even know. Puppy fur. All right, Biden, relax. <laughs> <laughs> and then five. Sipping the garden hose. Oh. I've yeah, I've heard all uh, of those, and I've some kind of you remember uh, shoe leather. Um, Tobacco, those are the ones. Uh, I, although tobacco, I, I'd say I probably have gotten that one legitimately. And the leather, maybe. Yeah. You know, once or twice. When you, I just want to remind Chris that I remember back in the day, you know, when we had septic systems. Uh, <laughs> my father would use his hose in the septic system. So <laughs> I hope that you're not drinking out of that hose. <laughs> what? What did you do? Sometimes when he thought the. The because we had clay pipe, there was no plastic pipe back in the day. Yeah. And there's been times where that clay pipe would break because okay. of age and you know all that being pressure from the under the ground. And my father would use the hose to sh to to force back into the house to clear it out so that the toilet yeah. water would go down. So yeah. So that was a hose we never used. So Chris, enjoy. <laughs> Don't drink out of oh, that. We've all, as a kids, run up to that garden hose in the summer, and we know what you're talking about. That kind of 
mildewy, <laughs> musty smell that you get. <laughs> good fun. save. But, you know, good save. It's all yeah. good. It's all good. Good save. Not like the nutty one that Greg got. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Garden hose and nutness. <laughs> it's a bit nutty. So 1897 is a bottle and bond whiskey. And so bottle and bond means something very specific. And so that might be a good segue into to this week's uh, Whiskey Wizard. Amen. Ready to start the whiskey, whiskey with Let's do it. Yeah, All right. Ready to go? All, All right, right, kids. We'll be right back. We'll be right Enjoy back. Enjoy the show. Hang tight. Whiskey with It's the Whiskey Wizard. Hello and welcome to the Whiskey Wizard, where we say that whiskey making takes scientific knowledge and artisan skill and dedication and a bit of the wizard's alchemy of light, air, earth, and fire. Let's talk today about Bottled in Bond. Bottled in Bond is a label used to refer to American-made distilled beverages that have been made, aged, and bottled according to a set of legal specifications containing the United States government standards as originally specified under the Bottled and Bond Act of 1897. <clears throat> the Big Bottled and Bond movement began with a group of whiskey distillers led by Colonel Edmund Haynes Taylor Jr. to join with then Secretary of the Treasury John G. Carlyle to fight for the Bottled and Bond Act. George Garvin Brown, a Brown foreman renowned, was also a big supporter of the Act. Prior to the Act's passage, much of the whiskey sold as straight whiskey was anything but straight. Much of it was flavored and colored with iodine, tobacco, and other more, well, even more questionable additives. Obviously, the nation needed some type of official certified quality assurance program. The act provided that the federal government became the certifying entity for spirits authenticity. It also provided distillers with a tax incentive for participating, and that really helped to ensure accurate accounting and collection of the right amount of tax. To ensure compliance, Treasury agents were originally assigned to control access to so-called bonded warehouses at the distilleries. The fact is that while the act applies to all spirits, most bonded spirits are in fact whiskeys. To be labeled as bottled in bond or bonded, the spirit must be a product of one distillation season. And that distilling season is January to June or July through December and made by one distiller at one distillery. It also must have been aged in a federally bonded warehouse under U.S. government supervision for at least four years and bottled at 100 proof or 50% alcohol by volume. Once bottled, the label must identify where it was distilled, and if different, where it was bottled. Only spirits produced in the United States may be designated as bonded. While the Treasury agent's lock may no longer be on the distiller's spirit safe and bonded rickhouse today, many of us still consider the whiskey made to the bottled and bond specification to be an endorsement of quality, but some distillers consider it archaic and abstain from using the term. To me, the bottle and bond designation means something very specific, whereas straight whiskey may be the byproduct of mixing or blending of many straight whiskeys, all perhaps with varying ranges of age and quality. I think bottle and bond serves as a great indicator regarding the skill of its maker. In my imagination, I see master distillers in some back room at the whiskey festival event or distillers convention, most likely to be comparing each other's bottled and bond product, accompanied by some toasting and some boasting. I imagine many of our viewers have noted cases where they've not been fond of a distiller's standard offering, only to have later tried their bottled and bond version and been truly amazed at how good it is. I know I have many times. In fact, I find there are a few bottled and bond offerings that I'd pass on. As far as the VIB designation, it seems a bit of a guarantee that a whiskey is, in a way, the real deal. Also, I do find that VIB whiskeys work really well in cocktails as they don't get so lost in the mix. And yeah, 
When it comes to this somewhat antiquated designation, I particularly don't mind at all the bit of Americana that goes along with it. So I'm fond of Bottled and Bond. And that's all for now. This is Douglas Dunbar, the Whiskey Wizard for the Whiskey Roundtable. And now back to the live show. So, yeah, welcome back. Um, yeah, so I agree with BIB um, and what it stands for, uh, quality, and, you know, a little bit of the Americana, as it were. Mm -hmm. I, I, I certainly like that aspect. But I have found that BIB whiskeys are consistently good. And the 1897 that we just tried is no exception. So I agree, good uh, stuff. I think their products are good. So yeah, I mean, if you're if you're going through your local uh, retail outlet and you see a BIB on the shelf, I, I'm going to say you can't go too wrong grabbing that. In my experience, I agree. So yeah, some of the best whiskeys we've had here on the show have been BIBs that we've had. So uh, I agree. I think the uh, e even at the lower price ranges, you know. Fifteen to twenty-five dollars, or the B and Bs are, are usually pretty consistently decent. Yeah, there. I agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you're looking for a great whiskey that's not inexpensive, and you come across some of those, you know, get them because because it's it is going to be a good whiskey. It is from I agree. from my experience so far. Like I said, I haven't had any that I can think of that I would pass on. So. Well, we're gonna at some point um, for further, you know, future show, somewhat future, maybe even next month. Uh, Sidecar and Kurt brought me back a Heaven Hill Seven Year Bottled and Bond. Yeah. Nice. So we're going yeah. to. Uh, that'd be a good, good show to do. I think we'll look forward to yeah. that one. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So now I see you got a new cigar. I do. I do. You know the name of this one? <laughs> this is a uh, Swisher Sweet uh, Double Legetto. White Owl. Uh, now this is a, a Perdomo 20th Anniversary Cigar. Okay. That's what I'm smoking right now. Good it's deal. a Maduro with the uh, Connecticut wrapper. I was going to say, that's a lighter wrapper than yeah. you usually go yeah. for. but. So this is, this is, don't let the wrapper fool you because this is a pretty stout cigar. So very good smoke. Thank you, Ralph. Thanks, Sidecar. Like You're okay every once in a while. It's about time. I'm a dark about time. I'm a dark wrapper guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I did like cigars, that would be the kind I would like. It would be uh, more chocolatey, right? Right, right. More chocolatey. More, more alcoholic. Right. So, uh, what's next? I guess the news. Do we have any news? Uh, I do. Or do we I'm have a, more Chris Snyder comments? I, uh, if you well, want to. Well, 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 Greg's getting ready. Yeah. Chris is continuing to go down. All right, well, what are the some last, other ones? So, the last say? one we talked about was the garden hose, which sent us yeah. down a path that um, I'm not sure that anybody can ever forget. But he also said six is shoelaces. Yeah, okay. Shoelaces. Well, you know, when you take them off that tennis shoe, I think, yeah, there's... There's that kind of. I don't like you said. Where's his mouth been? Um, and then seven marshmallow peanuts. And I think what you mean, Chris, are those like the orange marshmallow candies? Is that what you're talking about? Because I love those, but I've never tasted that in whiskey before. So marshmallow peanuts. That's. You know those circus peanuts, those little orange puffy. I used to love yeah, those as a kid. When we were kids, Chris used to throw those up in the air mm -hmm. just to freak me out. And then they'd land on the street and he'd stomp on them. And then I'd laugh. And then to my horror, he'd pick it up and then eat it. Oh, Good <laughs> man. He must, have, he must have been a wrestler. Oh, uh, So is that circus uh, peanut <laughs> taste orange, before yeah, or after it hit the ground? That's what I want to know. Oh, yeah, I know. That's a great question. When, when, I, when, only Chris can answer that because I don't know what it tastes <laughs> like after you grind it into the street and then eat it. We, uh, I remember back in my wrestling days in high school when uh, we were a pretty uh, mean and evil crowd and we didn't ever lose, so to say. And... Uh, we would, after wrestling, we would go t to somebody's house with the 24 pack of beer and do quarters. If you remember the game quarters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we ran out of beer one day, and our friend's dad had a fish tank. And uh, he had a lot of different little baby uh, goldfish in there. And uh, we would, we started, uh, long story short, we emptied the 
goldfish out of the tank. We were down in goldfish. <laughs> you ended up doing shots of goldfish. <laughs> no, not well, shots. You had to, you, instead of doing a shot, you just got the. You, they caught it with the net. You took it out and you swallowed oh, it. Oh, for the love of God! Oh yeah. Oh my. Those were the days. <laughs> Okay, a little news. Good. Peyton Manning's new bourbon. So legit, can't even call it a celebrity bourbon. How about that, kids? So, uh, Colt 45? <laughs> Colt 45. Uh, started in 2019 when Manning's, uh, Manning, tennis great uh, Annie Roddick, and uh, sports announcer Jim, Jim Nance joined a small ownership that purchased uh, Sweeten's Cove Golf Club. So uh, this, this is supposedly... One of the best uh, bourbons uh, out there right now, and uh, they have a female distiller. And uh, sorry, kids, I'm completely unprepared. Um, it's just because you're reading off your phone yeah, well, what's, today. And what's the name of it? The whiskey? Or you haven't got to? No, it? no, I just right. I just announced it. It was the Sweetens, Cove? Sweetens, Sweetens Cove, Cove Golf Club. Yeah, Sweetens Cove is the name of the bourbon, and um, I just had the girl Melanie. Uh, I'm sorry. Is it Mariani? Where are you at, dear? Right here. Marianne. That's Marianne? That's Marianne. Never seen it spelled that way. Marianne, Marianne Eves to blend it. She's the master distiller, and uh, she is the one that was in charge of doing the blend for them. And uh, the, the product is supposed to be uh, available to Tennessee residents starting May 26th this week. Uh, expected... Uh, Price tag, if I'm reading this right, two hundred dollars. About two hundred dollars. That's not a bargain. That's and, not uh, a, definitely not a bargain. That's no. not a bargain bourbon. I think I need to have. <laughs> you it made that one word. Yeah. Bergen bourbon. <laughs> so uh, peanut yaroma, uh, mature flavor profile, unexpectedly heavy on the oak, and it's a hundred and two point one proof. Nice. That'll, that's in the that's sweet. That's in the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. you know? So like those uh, 95 to 105. I don't know if we'll ever see it here in Ohio or Canada or Alaska or the North Pole, but uh, anywhere other than Ohio, you can probably pick up a bottle. Probably easily. Yeah, so... Um, now, that's the one they would go golfing on this course, I think. Correct. And then um, they would do a shot of whiskey before they would start out their, their round. Mm -hmm. And then they said... Well, Hey, we could do our own. So they went in and, and, and did their own and teamed up with you know Peyton Manning. And if I'm, you're I'm Peyton the Manning, dork. You've got the money to make it happen. Well, yeah, and, and he teamed up with Tennessee, right? Which is where he played college football. So um, he's kind of returning to his college roots yep. yeah. to make this happen. So uh, I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to reach out to a few people see if we can get a bottle of that. I'm surprised you don't already have one just found out about it last week and it's not even out yet so i got a little time well i think i've got another one okay. that you don't have because we talked earlier but a couple new brand releases are going on out there one is the clover honoring the golfer bobby jones it's launching widely it says uh, whatever that means the lineup features a single barrel bourbon at about fifty dollars a rye at about fifty and a 10-year-old Tennessee whiskey at $6, available in about 20 states. So, um, Clover, the Clover is the name of the brand um, and the new distillery. So, um, that's something it uh, looks like we ought to try to see if we can find. Mm -hmm. That sounds interesting. Baltimore-based Sagamore Spirit has released some new beer barrel finish rise including one finished in sierra nevada cast patty you you got to have that one we got to get that for my friend pat um who's a scotch drinker and a sierra nevada heineken drinker so awesome. sagamore spirit brewers select rye ale barrel finished rye is 70 dollars with just about 744 bottles available so um a bit of a unicorn there Michter's is rolling out the 2020 release of its 10-year-old single barrel. I don't know if we've talked about we that. Did. We did. Okay. We did All talk right. about that. Well, so we're talking about it again. Retail priced at $130. Mm -hmm. So limited amounts available there, but I'm sure that's a fantastic whiskey. And uh, for our single malt-loving friends, the last drop 
is rounding out its previous releases of, of very old Glenn Roths with a 1970 vintage comprising of three single casks. Just 286 bottles of the nearly 50-year-old mm -hmm. single malt are available priced at a mere six thousand two hundred fifty dollars fifty dollars a bottle. So I figured, uh, well, yeah, I think you should get that bottle. I would say yeah. that's a unicorn <laughs> and um, a little out of out my of your price, price range. range. Yes, a little out of my price range. So, well, Any, anyhow, we that's uh, that's all I got. That's I mean, there's got. not a lot of new releases, and there's not a lot of news at the moment. Yeah, we uh, we talked about the old Forster single barrel. Um, they are not doing the store blends anymore for the single barrel and uh, that bottle is going away which one is this the the uh, old Forster single barrel is that what you're talking about uh, we were talking about the the Michters oh Michters yeah. I'm sorry my bad yeah my yeah. bad I got mixed up you said single barrel <laughs> and the different I apologize but I didn't that's interesting okay. I didn't know that old Forester was yeah so I'm trying to uh, stock up on I all really the, enjoyed that uh, the last one we well, and the one we were drinking before the show today. So. Yeah, all the uh, all the old Forster single barrel store picks. That's I, I collect those, so I try to make sure that I have uh, one of everything I can. So, just cool, and, it, and it's a great drink, you know. But anyway, yeah. so yeah, we're gonna. You know, I have some different mixers. We should. Uh, I'm should a big mixer. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's one of my talks. We'll, we'll, in uh, the American whiskey realm. Let's put that so. on the. Uh, maybe we can put that on the menu for uh, next month. Yeah, we'll uh, sit down after the show and make sure that we've got some some things planned. So out. we're gonna do an old. Uh, I mean, we're gonna do a Four Roses. Right. Next um, week. Next week. Mm -hmm. um, we'll we'll announce that and then. Uh, um, so we've done quite a few American whiskeys in a row. And then we're gonna. Uh, put on the calendar a couple single malts. Yeah, we have to catch uh, up on our scotches. For do sure. a couple single malts the next couple of shows after that. Uh, but, but again, we're looking forward to having uh, Jennifer on next week. And, That's going to And be because great. she's a, a big bourbon fan, we, we definitely wanted to do a bourbon while she's joining us. So we'll be doing that next week. So kind That's of, it. hey, uh, don't forget to put up Old Glory and have a great Memorial Day holiday weekend. Um, That's it. You've got any parting, words, yeah, of any wisdom? parting words of wisdom for well, us? Well, my words of wisdom is remember, uh, when it, whatever you're going through, uh, a whiskey may not help, but it's worth a shot. <laughs> and our closing quotes today is, if I can, this comes from none other than Mark Twain, who said, if I cannot drink bourbon and smoke cigars in heaven, then I shall not go. Amen. Great. Have a great weekend, everybody, and a great week, and we'll see you a week from tonight. Stay safe, everyone. Happy Memorial Day. We are your host, Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doug Dunbar. See you next week, kids. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe. Thanks, everyone. All right. Catch you next week. Bye-bye. If whiskey stopped working, every bar in town would be closing their doors, shutting down every Stop the working